Well, day two, still on the Inca Trail, um, still on the steep incline. I'm in a spot of the trail, not quite halfway in. This is where the groups usually break up and just kind of go at your own pace. Um, what am I learning? I'm learning you can almost do anything if you take little small steps. The guides actually talked about taking little baby steps. I also learned it's a lot easier to go at your own pace if you're by yourself. You know, in the world right now, there's a challenge with a lack of connection. And there certainly are challenges when uh, you're not around others, when you're not connected to others. But one of the blessings is it kind of allows you to go at your own pace, and that can be a that can be a great thing. Um, sometimes you need someone beside you to pick you up and motivate you. Sometimes you need someone to be with you where you are at and that can certainly be helpful and important when you can't move when you can't take baby steps um, but right now on this portion of the trail you can probably hear in my voice I'm pretty winded by the experience but we're in this beautiful spot where the, there's a beautiful tree canopy with lichen. It's a beautiful trail. Not so beautiful that there's just constant steps. There's really no flat spot for the foreseeable future. Um, but you know, once again, I'm always looking at what is the world, what is the universe trying to tell me? And I think for this portion of the trail, it's trying to tell me sometimes you're in a steep climb. Sometimes you're in a steep climb all by yourself, and that's okay. Sometimes it's actually beneficial. Steffi Steff is uh, kind of burst ahead with some of the faster folk in the group and that's okay that's uh, that's good and it can be good to have that experience we talked last night I have this little tiny cute little book that hopefully I'll show on YouTube I went on Amazon and searched for miniature books and I got this adorable little hardcover book that actually came with a little case and it's small like two inches by two inches and I think it's based on Taoism but it has a bunch of verses 81 verses and we've taken turns kind of reading a verse kind of a motivational quote for us I'm a big fan of motivational quotes sometimes I got to keep saying them so I believe them. Sort of preach faith till you have it. Um, there's a lot of wisdom in those quotes. On this trip, there's a bunch of people in their 20s and early 30s. They're still in the competitive mindset. I'm competitive on some things. Some things like this, not so much. I'm in competition with the mountain. I'm in competition with my mind, my body, I'm trying to make this, make this an experience, enjoy the journey. I finally did hit a flat spot, beautiful river. Maybe you can hear it in the background, maybe not, but this is kind of like the Andes jungle is what it looks like. I'm not sure if that's 
actually the case or not very much looks like my experiences of traveling and hiking in Costa Rica um, but you can do amazing things when you pace yourself sometimes you can probably really hear the water here it's rushing pretty good all of this is glacier runoff supplies a lot of the drinking water just absolutely gorgeous <sighs> um, it's beautiful I struggle with not being obsessed about the destination I struggle with saying this is what I want to accomplish and then tick it off the I've done it the bucket list you know some say you should actually have a a bucket that you put stuff in that you don't need anymore I don't need to accomplish this I don't need to accomplish that uh, for me frankly it was money and uh, I thought money would bring happiness and joy and I grew up fairly uh, middle class in Canada and uh, I thought things like a sports car would bring me happiness. It didn't. It actually brought me unhappiness. So then I had to worry about where to park it. Had to worry about damaging the rims. Had to worry about it getting hit. Couldn't take it just anywhere. Stressed me out. Decreased my happiness. So that so I got rid of it. Bought a cheaper stick shift Volkswagen GTI love it that brought me joy but enjoying the journey and frankly sometimes you can't enjoy the journey sometimes things are going to flat out suck there are parts of this hike as you look at the terrain and you hear my breathing increase It's not, it's not fun or easy, but I guess that's the way things go in life. If things were easy, perhaps everyone would do it. There's probably some value in things that was a struggle. Uh, so I'm gonna try to lean in, lean into that and make that my my learning point for the day oh man this is not easy this is where I wished I planned the trip more than a month in advance and had more time to, tr to train specifically doing stairs I did some stairs uh, that certainly made it easy. Uh, kind of lit up my calves. I was pretty good at stretching. But, whew, this is a bit of a different experience. I am using hiking poles. A lot of the 20, 30 year olds are not. At least they're not using them all the time. After we climb, Several miles on the trail, I'm being instructed to have water by some of my other teammates. Um, <sighs> I'm just gonna stop for a minute and take a look at a beautiful view, the clouds, the mountains. The vegetation is just absolutely gorgeous. And I guess, yeah, this is tough. But this is such a blessing to be able to do this. This also did not cost much money. I think I've referenced it before. I think it was maybe 15 to 1600 US dollars. I used air miles to fly here. You know, for me, that's an experience. 
an experience worth having. Meeting people, quite frankly, from Australia and from England has been an absolute blessing. Uh, just seeing and hearing cultural differences. I love meeting people. Brings me joy. Brings me energy. And so that's certainly been a big blessing. Part of my journey here too is to figure out my why. Uh, I've talked about it on prior episodes. You know, what's your why? Why do you do what you do? Thinking of something, spending time with it, writing some stuff down, scribbling it out, trying it on. As I said previously, my why was to push myself and others to fully live, laugh, and love. Part of what we try to do with Between Two Teeth is to put something out there to connect, discover, and inspire. And it's not just lip service, that's the lens at which we kind of look at all kinds of stuff. I think we do a good job on some of that. We do a poor job on other components. Uh, but we put something out there. Part of it is the push. Part of it is you can take a motorcycle journey to Italy if you so choose, but you don't have to. Get yourself out of your comfort zone. You can hike the Inca Trail if you so choose, but you don't have to. You know, what's your adventure? There's things that you can't do if you have little kids, but there's also things you can do if you have little kids. Probably one of the best experiences that I did when my boys were small was mission trips. We went to Costa Rica and Nicaragua and Africa and they had a chance to see different cultures, see kids living a different experience. And they were young. My youngest at one point was five. And he saw a lot of really interesting things. My 10 year old, you know, one of my favorite stories, we spent a day in a local community. It was a community right by the dump in Costa Rica. And I grew up in a small town in Canada. I had never seen such extreme poverty in my life. Um, it was extreme. I was kind of nervous for my safety and the safety of my family. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, they always tell you as a parent, ask an open-ended question. <laughs> Kids love yes-no questions. But I, I just said to my oldest boy, I said, David, tell me about today. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh my gosh, the poverty, extreme, couldn't get over it. And he said, well, Dad, the kids didn't have many things, but I think they're the happiest kids I've ever seen in my life. And I was floored by that comment. I talk about that comment a fair amount because it helps to remind me the importance of perspective. It also helps me things that kids see that adults have so much that gets in their way. And things often don't make you happy. It's important to have food and shelter, to feel secure. You know, we had a chance to work with a bunch of Ukrainians that got pushed out of Ukraine on our Ukrainian mission. And that's bad, you know. They spent time 
in a bunker for months before they got out of there. You know, hearing bombs go off constantly. My son was with me on this trip. He got a chance to see kids that were had to stop their studies. He had just finished college. These kids had to stop because of the war. One of our helpers, one of our translators was 18. He hadn't started university yet. He was in a different country. He was in Warsaw. His parents were in a different European country. His brothers were in yet another different country. Uh, he had nothing but the clothes on his back. Really puts things in perspective. And when you're having a struggle, it's really helpful for me at least to see that. And it kind of resets me. You know, I am uh, famous or infamous for causing my own challenges and problems at times, whether it's overthinking things or I have too much stuff in my life that's weighing me down or I worry about things that I can't change. Usually it doesn't help you. I had a patient one time. I'm an oral maxillofacial surgeon in Dallas and uh, the patient was in her late 70s. I had to remove all of her teeth and deliver a denture. And she smiled before the procedure. <laughs> she had a toothless smile and then with denture in a toothful smile afterwards. And I paused and I said, you know, I got to ask you, you seem like one of the happiest people that I've ever met. What's the secret? And she said, uh, you know, I think it's two things. One, I always tried to live by the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd want them to do unto you. But she goes, secondly, if there's something going on that bothers me, if I can do something about it, then I do something about it. Or at least try to. If I can't do something about it, then I stop worrying about it. And it was really such a great perspective. It's uh, easier said than done. I know a lot of us have anxieties related to negative self-talk. A lot of us are just burned out. Steffi, Steph, and I are active with a wellness initiative with the American Dental Association. And uh, burnout, depression, anxiety, substance abuse is a real problem with healthcare professionals as it is with lots of other groups. And being proactive, having some tools in your toolbox, destigmatizing mental health care, quite frankly, even destigmatizing taking time off for yourself to prevent burnout, to get away, to have a different experience. You know, I'm not overly worried about work and uh, anxiety or things like that as I'm walking up this trail. Um, I'm putting one foot in front of the other, trying to look at the beautiful scenery around me and to try to think of my, my new why, my new purpose. So anyways, on that, I'll end off the, the rambling. Um, I appreciate you all listening. Uh, what's your adventure? What's your why? What would you like to do? What are you afraid to do? What do you need to do? Those are all important questions to ask yourself. Check you later.